Hi class and welcome to our last video lesson of chapter 14. We're doing some more standard scores today. So you're going to need your z-score table, your table A, because we're going to be using that on most of the problems for today. Yesterday we did one-tailed data. Today we are doing two-tailed data. Um, so we're going to be using this formula again, the standard score, the way you calculate it is you take the observation, we sometimes call that x, you subtract the mean, we call that x bar, and you divide it by the standard deviation. And remember, a standard score is also called a z-score. So here's our condensed formula that I use many, 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 many times. Okay? So for two-tailed data, that just means that we're trying to find the percent of observations that lie between two z-scores. This might be a z-score of 0.8, for example, and this might be a z-score of 2.01, just a little bit bigger than 2, for example. We would want to find the, the percent of observations that lie between those two z-scores. Or two-tailed data is also finding what percent lies below that z-score and what lies above this z-score. So either in between two z-scores or below and above a certain z-score. So that's what two-tailed data entails. So here's one right here. We're trying to find what percent of our observations lie between a negative 0.56, so a negative 0.56 is roughly right there, and a 1.81, it is roughly right there. Okay, so I want to find what percent of observations lie between those two standard scores. Well, if I find the percentile for both of these values, a negative 0.56, let's find that one first, a negative 0.56 is right here, a negative 0.5. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 28.77. So this right here is 28.77% is this red region. Because remember, these percentiles is everything below a certain z-score. So that's 28.77%. And then a 1.81 z-score, a 1.8 one is right here, 96.49, 96.49. So basically, class, <clears throat> what we're going to end up doing is we're going to subtract both of those percents. The reason why that is is because this green region right here, all of this percent is 96.49, but I don't want that whole 96.49%, I only want this blue region, so I would have to subtract the 28.77, which is this space right here. All I want is the blue, so I'm going to take the 96%, and I'm going to subtract the red, which is the 28%. Okay? So that's going to be my answer, 96.49, subtract 28.77, and when you do that, you get an answer of 67 point seven two percent that is the percent of observations that lie in between a negative point five six and a one point eight one basically find the two z scores and then you subtract them so same thing here for question number two a one point three two z score and a two point seven three one point three two is like right here and two point seven three is way up here so I'm dealing with this region right here. It's not, it's not very many percent, okay, so that you could start, um, you know, estimating a little bit more here. It's probably going to be less than 10 percent or something like that. Um, if we take a look here, 1.32 z-score, 1.32 is 90.66, 90.66, and then a 2.73, is 99.68, 99.68. And we don't want the whole 99.68. We want to take that and subtract this 90.66. So we'll take, again, 99.68 and subtract the 90.66. And that's going to be our answer. So we get a percent of 9.02%. 
Okay, so if you want to find the percent that lies in between two z-scores, you take the bigger percentile and you subtract the smaller percentile. Now here's one where we want to find what percent of observations lie at least 1.73 standard deviations away from the mean. So here's the mean, it's at zero. 1.73 is right here approximately. So we want to find this percent that I'm just shading in red here. But also, this is 1.73 standard deviations away on the left side as well. So we got to find both of these percents. Okay, We want to find this percentile and find this percentile and add them up together. Because if we are 1.73 standard deviations from the mean, this distance is 1.73, and this distance is 1.73. Okay? So let's take a look at the 1.73. First, we'll go at the negative 1.73 standard deviations away from the mean. And a negative 1.73, kind of difficult to see here, negative 1.73. And what number is that? 4.18? 4.18%. 4.18%. And now we're also going to look at the positive 1.73. So this red shaded region, I should say this here, is 4.18%. And then we're going to take <coughs> this 1.73. 1 1.73 positive. 1.7. 3 is 95.82. 95.82. And remember, a percentile is everything that lies below, and you want to find what lies above. So you're going to take 95.82 and subtract it from 100. Because 95.82 is what lies to the left of 1.73. If you want to find what lies to the right of 1.73, you've got to subtract it from 100. And you take 100 minus 95.82, you get 4.18. Isn't that something? The same percentile to the left of a negative 1.73 is the same as to the right of a positive 1.73. Is that coincidence or is it supposed to happen that way? It's supposed to happen that way because a normal curve is symmetrical about the mean. So on all of these z-scores, you're going to have the same distance that lie to the left of a negative 1 as you are to the right of a negative 1 because it's symmetrical. To the left of a negative half as to the right of a positive half. They're always going to be symmetrical. So really, you just need to take 4.18 and double it. This distance, or this percentile right here, is 4.18%, and this percentile right here is 4.18%. So what is our answer when we add the two of them up? It is 8.36. 8.36%. Let's take a look at number four, and hopefully this one will make sense to you um, after doing question number three. If we want to find the percent of observations that lie 0.75 standard deviations away from the mean, here's 0.75. So we want this percentile. And here is a negative 0.75. So we want this percentile. Really, all you need to do is find this percent and then just double it because it's symmetrical about the mean. So whatever this percentile is, this percentile will be the same. So a negative 0.75, a negative 0.7012345. Is that number right there, which is 22.66. 22.66%, so this one is also going to be 22.66%. When you add them together, you get 45.32%. 45.32% of our observations lie at least 0.75 standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, question number five is a little bit different. This time, I want to know. Uh, Right now, we know the percentile. It's the 20th percentile. We want to find the z-score that corresponds with that. So what z-score matches the 20th percentile? Well, if we take a look at our normal curve, here is the 50th percentile. It's zero standard deviations away from the mean. It is the mean, x bar. That's the 50th percentile. So the 20th percentile is probably somewhere down here. So we're looking at a negative z-score. So we really don't even need to look at this chart right now. We want to find 
the 20th percentile. So in our table A right here, we want to find 0.2. The closest thing to 0.2, because 0.2 is the 20th percentile. So if I'm looking here, this is like 4%. Here's like the 5%, 6%, whatever. Here's 7%. I want the 20th percentile, 18%. Um, it looks like the 20th percentile is closest to this number, 0 0.2005. This is the 20th percentile right here. What z-score corresponds to that? A negative 0.84. A negative 0.84 matches up with the 20th percentile. So that's the z-score that we're looking for. And that's going to be our answer, a negative 0.84, a negative 0 0.84. So we're going to be using that several times in our lesson for today as well. What z-score corresponds to the 20th percentile? Well, we look for the 20th percentile in our table A. There it is. We match it up to a z-score, a negative 0.84. Let's take a look at this one. Be careful on this one. It's worded a little bit tricky. 45% of all observations are greater than this z-score. So if we take a look at our normal curve again, here is the mean. This is the 50th percentile. And we want 45% of observations that are greater than z. So if we want 45 that are greater, that's this. So what's going to be the percentile? Remember, percentile is everything that lies below a certain z-score. So we're looking for the 55th percentile. Because that 55th percentile is where 45% of observations are greater than it. 55% are lower. So we're looking for the 55th percentile. So we're going to look on the positive side of the z-score sheet, and we're looking for 0.55. The closest number that you see to 0.55. Where is that? 0.55. I'm seeing some 0.55s in here. We're kind of looking for the one that's closest. So this one is 0.17 away, and this one is 0.22 away. So which one's closest? It is going to be the 0.5517, 55.17%. So what z-score is that? 0 0.13. 0 0.13 is our z-score. The z-score is 0 0.13. And that is our answer for that one. So hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to apply this information to some real-world data. What percent of scores lie between a 250 and a 450 on the SAT? Well, if I have to find a percent, I must first find its z-score. Because once I find a z-score, I can use my table and match it up with a percentile. So here we go. To find a z-score, we take our observation, subtract our mean, and divide it by our standard deviation. So we're going to take 250 and subtract the mean, which is a 500, and divide it by the standard deviation, which is 100. So what z-score is that? 250 minus 500 divided by 100. You get a z-score of a negative 2.5. We'll do the exact same thing here for a z-score for an observation of 450. So the z-score z -score for a 450 minus the mean of 500 divided by the standard deviation of 100. And that z-score is a negative 0.5. A negative 0.5. So a negative 2.5 is way over here. And a negative 0.5 is right here. We want to find this percent. Well, to find the percent between two z-scores, you take the higher percentile and subtract the lower percentile. So the, higher, the, the negative 0.5, if you look on your chart, that is the 30.85 percentile. And this negative 2.5, that is the 0 0.62 percentile. So if we want to find what's in between, we take the two percents and we subtract it. So 30.85 minus the 0 0.62, 
we get our answer of 30.23%. 30.23%. Okay. Taking a look at question number eight. What percent of observations lie between 25 and 30 on the ACT? Why don't you guys pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Hope you found the z-scores of both of them. The z-score for a 25 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. You should have got a z-score of 1.17. When you did the z-score for a 30, it's 30 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And you should have got a z-score of 2. So between 1.17 and 2, you want that percent. So you took the z-score of 2, and you matched that to a percentile of 97.72. And you took the z-score of a 1.17, and when you looked in your chart, you got the 87.90 percentile. And then to find the percent in between those two z-scores, you simply subtract their percentiles. 97.72 minus 87.90, and you should get 9.82%. 9.82% is the correct answer on this one. Okay, question number nine. What percent of scores are at least 1.5 standard deviations from the mean on the ACT? Well, 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean is right here. And remember, class, 1.5 standard deviations left of the mean is also at least 1.5 standard deviations from the mean. So you want to find this percentile and this percentile and add them together. So the 1.5 standard deviations from the mean, if you match that to a percentile, it's the 6.68 percentile. And then this one is also 6.68 because they are always symmetrical. So when you double it, you get 6.68 plus 6.68. Our answer is 13.36%. Okay, our last two, they're probably the trickiest ones of the day. So if we take a look at this one, what score would you need to get to be in the top 1%? So this time, class, I'm not trying to find a z-score. I want to find the actual score. This right here, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation, this is going to be my answer. Okay, so that must mean I know what the z-score is. If I know what the z-score is, I must know its standard score, which is the z-score. So the top 1%, if you're in the top 1% on the SAT, you are way up here, aren't you? If you're in the top 1%, what does that mean your percentile is? It's not the first percentile, it's the 99th percentile. You are better than 99% of people that take the SAT if you're in the top 1%. So we want to find the z-score that matches up to the 99th percentile. So we're going to take a look at our z-score chart, our table A, and we want to find the 99th percentile. So where is 0 0.99 at? 0 0.99. I'm going to make this bigger so I can see it. 0 0.99. The closest thing I see to 0 0.99 is this sucker right there, 0 0.9901. And that z-score is a 2.33, 2.33. So we're gonna now find our data entry, this thing right here, for a z-score of 2.33. So write that down with me. The z-score, 2.33, that equals the observation, which is what I wanna find, minus the mean, what test are we talking about again? We're talking about the SAT, the SAT. So the SAT has a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. So it's 2.33 equals X minus 500 divided by 100. So we simply multiply both sides by 100 and get 233. That equals X minus 500. 
and then add 500 to both sides. So the score that we would need to get on the ACT to be in the top 1% or the 99th percentile is a 733 or higher. If you score higher than a 733, you're also in the top 1%. So that is how you do that one. Let me know if you have any questions when you get to class tomorrow.